one of President Trump's most controversial former advisors is breaking his silence on his time in the West Wing. Steve Bannon served as the president's chief strategist until leaving the White House last month after clashing with other aides. In this Sunday's episode of 60 Minutes, Bannon talks to Charlie Rose in his first in-depth TV interview since leaving the administration. Here's a preview. Well, how do you want to be perceived, you, today, because you have a media image? The media image, I think, is pretty accurate. I'm a street fighter. That's what I am. You're more than that. No, I think I'm, I think I'm, a, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a street fighter. And by the way, I think that's why Donald Trump and I get along so well. Donald Trump's a fighter. Great counterpuncher. Great counterpuncher. He's a fighter. I'm going to be his wingman outside for the entire time. To protect. So you'll not be attacking those. Donald Trump in I, your I, role. I, it, no. Right. Our, our purpose is to support Donald Trump. By the way. And destroy his we, enemies? to make sure his enemies know that there's no free shot on goal. By the way, after the Charlottesville situation, that's what I told General Kelly. I was the only guy that came out and tried to defend him. I was the only guy that said, he's talking about something, taking it up to a higher level. Where did this all go? Where does this end? Does it end in, does it end in taking down the Washington Monument? Does it end in taking down? I'll tell you where many people suggest it should have gone. It should have gone in terms of denouncing, specifically from the very beginning, neo-Nazis and white supremacists and people of that political view. And it should have gone there because uh, those were people that Americans in World War II went to fight against. And you should have instantly have denounced them. And you didn't at first instinct. In fact, you seem to be doubling down in terms of a moral equivalency. What he was trying to say is that people that support the monument staying there peacefully and people that oppose that, that's the normal course of, of First Amendment. But he's talking about the neo-Nazis and neo-Confederates and the Klan, so, who, by the way, are absolutely awful. There's no room in American politics for that. There's no room in American society for that. And all Donald Trump was saying is, where does it end? Does it end in taking down the Washington Monument? Does it end in taking down Mount Rushmore? Does it end in taking Churchill's bust out of the Oval Office? My problem, my problem, and I told General Kelly this, when you side with a man, you side with him. I was proud to come out and try to defend President Trump in the media that day. There are no exceptions in terms of siding with someone? You can tell him, hey, maybe you could do it a better way. But if you're going to break, then resign. If you're going to break with him, resign. The stuff that was leaked out that week by certain members of the White House, I thought was unacceptable. If you find it unacceptable, you should resign. So who are you talking about? I'm talking, about, obviously, about Gary Cohen and some other people. That if you don't like what he's doing and you don't agree with it, you have an obligation to resign. So Gary Cohn, to to Gary Cohn should have resigned. Absolutely. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, CBS This Morning co-host Charlie Rose joins us now. In that little snippet, Charlie, there is so much to unpack. I can't imagine what the entire interview is like. When you asked him about his media image and he said, it's accurate, I'm a street fighter. And you said, it, it's a little more than that, Steve. Mm -hmm. And he sort of... When, well, we we when, walked through the whole issues of things that he's been accused of, of whether it's racism, racist, anti right. and other things. And his and, reaction? Uh, some of that comes, well, his reaction is not true. Hmm. You know, and he has examples of where he lived in, in Richmond, Virginia, and growing up in Richmond, Virginia, and has examples that he would tell you about um, different eff efforts that have been made to paint him that way. Mm -hmm. You know, what's interesting is he, he also... defends himself and says it's absolutely Because it's true. not just uh, either racist or somebody who capitalized on racist sentiment in this country in order to gain power and influence, and that's almost just as bad. Oh, it clearly and, is to do that. And his, you know. his attitude towards that? Well, I mean, his attitude about that, as you just said, is that there's no room in American politics mm. uh, for neo-Nazis or for white supremacists. Yeah. There's yeah. no room in American politics. The question ha has, and that they are not part of what he says, they're not part of the base for Donald Trump. And whether they're fringe elements, because I brought up the point that, in fact, uh, David Duke has said who was in Charlottesville and said, you know, we, we approve of what Donald Trump is doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's also, what's fascinating about Steve Bannon is he has said that his goal is to blow up institutions, to, right. to dismantle globalism. He considers right. himself a populist. Um, in the interview... Well, he is a populist. Uh, right. And, and in the interview, he talks about the Catholic Church. What did he say? Well, the Catholic Church, he, that was because I'd read a thing in the paper that morning uh, that Cardinal Dolan was was very concerned about the attitude about uh, immigrants who came here, children, and, and whether they would be deported or not. And he'd spoken out against that. And I brought that up when he was talking about DACA and what the political ramifications are. And, and I said, look, you're, you're a Catholic, and he, he is a Catholic, I mean, Catholic. 
uh, and, in, and he denounced the church. But he said in the end, as you have seen in the clip, he basically said it was about you know, opinion, not doctrine. Right. He believes in the doctrine of the church, but he believes also that immigrants, illegal immigrants right. or otherwise, are part of the base of the Catholic Church, that they need those people for their power. Well, that's right. And, and to fill churches, too. I mean, I think he yeah. was suggesting that they fill churches. Um, when it was when we heard that Bannon was out of the White House, of course, the conversation uh, was brought up about what he would do afterwards. Would he use the tremendous influence of Breitbart to then turn against the president? Would he be bitter? It certainly sounds in this little snippet that he's going to be loyal to the end. Well, I think that's true. That's exactly what he says. He is not bitter about the president or he if he was given a no on, multiple opportunities by me to say that under a series of questions mm -hmm. and did not. And you heard him in the clip that you showed say, look, I said, you know, none of this is going to be used against the president. He said, absolutely not. We are here to take cover the president's back. What he does say, though, is he's going to take on the Republican right. leadership in the House and Senate because he suggests that they want to literally nullify the election mm -hmm. that brought Donald Trump to power. Mm -hmm. was, in his mind, a sort of budding civil war in the Republican Party. That was what I was going to ask you, because as we have just witnessed over the past 24 hours, yeah. the president making that deal with the Democrats, and you have some Republicans, Jim Jordan, uh, for example, folks who are in the Freedom Caucus, um, who have been Republicans sort of in name only. It's been a big tent, but there have been these factions, going back to when John Boehner was speaker, that it doesn't seem, it seems like these factions are now fracturing. And it'll be interesting to see no, no. how Steve Bannon, because he's very close to those Freedom Caucus guys. He, in fact, Meadows had been, oh, Congressman Meadow from North Carolina, yep. head of the Freedom Caucus, has been to see him. Right. And a whole, I think, of, of, a series of conservative and Freedom Caucus members have come to Banner to see what Breitbart is intent on doing. He wants to join them and, in a sense, take on the Republican establishment. But it's not just a Republican establishment. He wants to take on Silicon Valley. He wants to take on Wall Street. I mean, it is true, a populist attack. He thinks that populism is on the rise, and it will either will be taken by the left or the right, yes. uh, one or the other. And he thinks that the major political parties are weaker today than they have been in a long time. Charlie, before I sorry, I was going to yeah, say sorry. before I let you go, Charlie, I, I have to ask you because uh, about that. Um, I don't know if you get into this in the interview, but he's a man who made millions of dollars on Wall Street. He was a Goldman Sachs executive. Is has he, he made sort that of renounced that the, though? But it, well, he made his money, I think, because of an investment uh, in that a, a deal in which he had a part interest in the syndication of Seinfeld, of Seinfeld which right. turned out to be a big winner for Jerry and everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, he did make some money on that. I mean, he clearly. Uh, he, he has a relationship with the Mercer family. I mean, they are multi-billionaires, right. as you know, and a huge impact. He acknowledges that they are big investors in Breitbart. So, I mean, there are always contradictions in terms of that. Uh, I'm sure he has friends in Silicon Valley. But as a broad, as a broad populist objective, he wants to take on those interests that he thinks uh, are, not, are, are not responsive to um, the sort of Americans that have been both deeply hurt uh, by the hollowing out of the middle class. I just want to ask you one more question. This guy does not do a lot of interviews, recorded interviews in particular. It's really hard to get sound and really TV. Yeah, That's okay, because I was thinking, I don't think I've ever seen him on TV. Yeah. Why do you think he wanted to do this? What was his motivation? Well, I, th I asked him that question. Just And he said, well, he said because uh, he really does want to go on the offensive. And, he, and the, He's going to war, in his own words. I'm going to war. You heard him talk about being a street fighter, although he yeah. said he was a counterpuncher. He's going to war, in his own mind. But he also wants to go to war against the Chinese in terms of an economic war. <laughs> uh, so uh, he's left the president where he said, I had influence there, but at Breitbart, I have power. And he's yeah. taken on a whole slew of battles, it sounds but like. But these are populist, yeah. you know. Yeah. These are all part of the targets for populist mm -hmm. political rhetoric. Charlie Rose, uh, so happy you were the one to conduct this interview. I can't wait to see the full interview. You can turn to the whole interview uh, on 60 Minutes this Sunday, and there will be snippets running out uh, on CBS this morning as well. Charlie Rose, thank you very much. And hope CBS in too. Yes, absolutely.